This is 60 Minutes, Victor, and we are talking to Melina Moy. Moy. How do I pronounce your name? You absolutely said it correctly. Melina Moy. It rhymes with boy. <laughs> yeah, but where does this name come from? It's, it's French, I think. It should be Moyer. You, can I tell you something? A lot of people always say Melina Moyer, and my cousin says, you know, let people say Melina Moyer. But I've always grown up and said Moy. But yes, it is a French last name um, from my grandfather. So supposedly my father tells me that my grandfather did speak French. So people always say, ladies and gentlemen, Melina Moyer. Or I go, Melina Moy, like boy. So either way, it's fine. But um, I always say Moy, but I guess you could say Moyer. That sounds cool, Moyer. It sounds cool on stage. <laughs> I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting. Melina so, Moyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds a bit like variety and uh, entertainment big I show. I like it. Very nice. Yeah, that's a. That's why I mentioned it. <laughs> and uh, you Take like notes. entertainment. You're an actress. That's right. Yes. Yeah, I had, I had to do some <laughs> research. Yeah. Um, you like R and B. You like the glitter, and 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 all those sh shiny things. And your simple lady in blue jeans who plays a rock guitar. I love it. That's right. There you go. You nailed me. Um, you know, I think, and I didn't even wait for the question, but I, I, I started speaking. It's okay. uh, no, I, I think that because it um, sounds like you're saying, like, describe who I am. I think you're, you're right. You nailed a lot of, uh, of the things that I love. Um, you know, I grew up in Minnesota, and in Minnesota, I think it's one of the greatest places to live. You know, we have the four seasons. Of course, we have, I mean, summer, you know, spring, winter, fall. Uh, Prince was there. Obviously, you know, Prince is an incredible artist. Of course, we had the Minneapolis sound. So I think that Minnesotans are just really stand-up people, just really good, honest people. Um, and I think just using that and having the way my parents raised my brothers and I was to always be honest and to just speak and live in your truth. And for me, I was always the girl who loves fashion. Of course, you're right. I love the shiny and the sparkle. I'm a woman. I love that. My guitars have, you know, Swarovski crystals on them. But at the same time, I think I am a simple person, meaning I, you know, when I left Minnesota and moved to Los Angeles, a lot of people uh, don't know, I actually came with only $20. That was it. And I actually uh, lived in my car and I would sleep in between the front and the back seat of the car like this, and I'd put clothes over my head, and I'd have a knife and a Bible. And I would wash up in gas stations, and I would put a sign in front of my car, and I would park on the streets, and I would say, please don't tow car, uh, car broken. But I knew that the police would always, you know, survey around so I would be safe. And um, I did that for a long time. I want to say no more, maybe like six months, maybe a little bit more. And then um, coming from that, it teaches you so much about life and it teaches you how strong you are. And I think it also teaches you to really respect the simple things and to realize you can get by with nothing. I lived off of two tacos and water a day. One taco for breakfast, one taco for dinner. That was it. And then of course, as my life changed, funny thing is, you know, I, I, I can afford to buy the things that I like, but at heart, a, a I'm car. still simple. Huh? A bigger car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a Porsche now. <laughs> no, but yeah, you know what I mean? And that's funny because it's like you see the things that you want, and then I'll never forget, I made a list and 10 things. I put, God, one day when things start to turn around, you know, I want to do this. I want to get uh, somewhere to live first. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask, uh, if I listen to you, the question pops up, why did you do that? Why did you, did you have to go L.A.? Why did you have to live in oh, a car? What was sure. the reason for that? You wanted to make your fortune and you wanted that's to right. be the star? Because the thing, that, that's right. Because for me, uh, growing up in Minnesota, I was coming from a family band. So you're talking mother, father, three kids. We all, I feel, went as far as we could. And you're talking, you know, when you're kids, you want to grow. The part, the great thing about being in a family band is when you're a family, you're never going to break up. When you're a band and you get upset, you go to your room. You're still a family. But when you decide, you know, I want to go in a different direction, 
kind of like the Jacksons, then Michael breaks off, then Janet breaks off. You know what I mean? You see something else that you feel you have to get out. And for me, I said, man, you know, I really want to explore um, a, same thing we're doing, but I really want to find out who Melina Moy is. I really, and I cannot do that as Lemoy Ice. Who is she? And you know what? I'm still trying to figure it out myself. But what I do know is um, I consider myself a very strong woman. I know what I want. I don't take any bulls from anybody. And I'm honest. I love to, to move no matter what in a place of being authentic and being real. And I love good people. And I really feel like you have to put out good energy to get something back. And for me, everything is important because I know how hard it is to get anything. So I'm, I'm rooting for anybody out there that's making anything happen because man, it's hard. It's hard. And I'm like, good for you because you have to, you have to lift each other up. That's how you win. Before I go on with the serious, with those serious questions, bad as I want to be. Yeah. This is the title. That's for right. Yeah. How bad do you want to be? You know what? I actually came up with this title because as you're coming through your career, you start to realize that with magazines and with different interviews, you, people can put you on certain pedestals and then people can take you off of those pedestals. And so what you have to understand is that you, yourself, you determine everything there is about you. That's it. There is no competition. You are the person that you are in competition with. You are the person that decides everything that, that is right for you. So when I say bad as I want to be, I'm saying for me, I, I feel for Melina, I am in a place of I'm putting my claim in, as I would say, here's my guitar, here's my fork. I know who I am. This is what I'm bringing. Either you like it or you don't, but I'm not going anywhere because there's nothing else for me to do. It's very interesting. I'm very observing. And the moment you started to say those words, you changed. For mm. you, are the woman, hey, hey, hey. And then you believe. Amen. This, it's, it, I think it's not only the Bible. You believe in something else. There's something else as well. How did you come to this belief? Did you have it before? Did you learn that in your car when you were sleeping in a car? Or where does it come from? Growing up, my mother and my father always said to us, Melina, you can do anything you want to. Anything. No matter what. You have to commit yourself 150% and believe that it's possible. And I think that because of the industry that we're in, you're constantly told you're not enough. You're constantly told you, maybe you're not good enough. You're constantly told this isn't going to work. So one of the most important, they do. That's just what they do. My history. Oh, so you're not <laughs> enough. You're, and that's why this, this album, the theme of the record is like, man, you're enough. Trust me, you are enough. Maybe it's, it's not you, it's them. You have to find your tribe. That's it. You get out there, you find your tribe. They're out there. That's what I'm doing. So that's also the theme for me. You're enough. I'm enough. Everything I do is, is works for Melina. I'm looking for the people who identify with Melina Moy and let's go and do us and bring each other up. If you, this is it. If you don't like what I'm doing, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to come along for the ride. All I'm asking is, hey, just respect it. Respect what I'm doing. That's it. That's what I do for you. Respect. But you don't have to like it. That's it. Um, but my parents, back to the belief, their whole thing is if you live on the street, Melina, and you become homeless, be the best homeless person. She, but she would say to me, no matter what you do, you have to commit. And my dad always says to me, Melina, who's the judge? And then I said, no one. He says, that's right. No one. It's, it's, it's all on you. You determine everything that you want. No one else. And that's when people, I always say to people, they say, so, you know, you're successful. And I say, what does success mean to you? Because we all have different definitions of success. You can have all the money in the world and still not have everything you want. You could have everything you want and not have one penny. Do you see? So it's not su success for you, it's more happiness. Happiness is everything. But you know, if I could have anything in the world, the most powerful thing is time. Oh, can you imagine? Time. Because that, you, you don't get it back. No matter how much money you have, no matter how kind you are, no matter how beautiful you are, it doesn't matter. Time, you cannot get back. I was getting very interesting. Time, <laughs> time in the sense of uh, whatever you want to do, you have to do, you have to do it now? Or in which sense do you All mean that? All the above. All the above. Even like, I appreciate you taking the time to come out to speak to me. Clearly, you know, must have took you 20, 40 minutes to get here. You won't get that time back. 
So the fact that you decided to come out here, I'm going to be present and give you 150% of this conversation because I respect you and I respect your time. That is what I'm saying. You will never get that back. As I just flew 12 hours to say, you know what I mean? So no matter what you do, enjoy every moment. And when you meet certain people in your life, I always love that because it's like an intersection, like a cross section of different energy and people that come together. And those are important because you're so blessed that we all, we all of us had a chance to cross each other's path right now. And you just, and again, you, you don't get that back. <laughs> different influences cross over. Um, if I listen to these words pop up in my mind, I think it's you, it describes you. And um, I shouldn't ask this, but we can edit it otherwise. But did you find your way? If I'm listening to your music, if I see what you're doing, you're still um, getting a lot of influences. Amen. And um, is this crossover at being there, there, there? Is it you or is this a point on your way? Gotcha. That's a great question. You know what? I hope that... I will continue to evolve my entire life. I do feel because of where I've come from and the things that have happened in my life, my album, I can only write from truth. Whether it's my truth or someone else's truth, that's what this record is. So I feel, yeah, for the first time, I feel like everything has come together, which is why it's so important for people to listen To, to my melodies, listen to the words, listen to what I'm saying in the songs. This is what I feel, this is where I am right now. And I think that there are other people who identify with that, which is why I say, I'm looking for my tribe too. You know, just like I'm saying, yeah, we're enough. I'm looking for that tribe. That's what I'm trying to do. And I feel like I am definitely in a wonderful place because I know who I am. I've had some great life experiences, of course, I hope that with the good Lord's blessing, we got many more to go. But yeah, yeah, I'm very confident in Melina and I'm excited for other people to learn who I am. And more importantly, I'm excited to also see what else the world has to offer. And for yeah. my music, yeah, I think as far as like the music evolving, of course, that's also just playing, playing, writing, playing, getting better, playing, writing, hearing, listening, retweaking, tweaking, and then finally you go, This, I feel, is some of the best music I have put together. I think sonically, lyrically, and I think also as the theme because of where I am and because of the things that I have gone through to get here, which again goes back to bad as I want to be. And the theme is celebrate yourself. That's it. A very serious and very interesting interview, but time for some promotion. Okay. Bad as, uh, bad as, as I want to be, Melina uh, Moy. That's it. And now you've got the opportunity to exaggerate. Why is this the best album? Why is this the album we have to buy? Why is this so fantastic? Why do you have to listen to your music? It's not so serious, just fun. Why? Gotcha. The reason I think that it's important to listen to Bad as I want to be is if you feel underappreciated, if you feel left out, if you feel like you are the only one, if you feel like people are constantly bringing you down, to me, listen to this record. Listen to this record. There are other people who identify with you, and I am telling you, you are enough. We have to celebrate ourselves. We have to lift each other up. At the same time, let's have fun. So with my music, I, coming from Minneapolis, if you love Prince, if you love funk, if you love rock, this is a record I think you will love. It's gonna make you dance, it's gonna make you think, and it definitely has the elements of what I feel is great music, which is your late 70s, 80s, except making it more current. And that's what we wanted to project with Bad As I Wanna Be, to give people the energy of um, seeing artists where you couldn't wait for them to get on stage, where you couldn't wait to see so-and-so's yeah. video. That's what I want to do. That's what we're trying to do. So when you hear Melina Moy coming to your town, please come, tell your friend, get a cousin, get a bunch of friends, come out, let's have a good time. That's what it's about. That's what music does. Music moves people. You don't even have to speak, we don't have to speak the same language. The thing about music is it translates. We feel it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. For us, then the album is new. 
Yes. It's brand new. Yeah. For you, you live with it for a while. Yeah. And if you look back, yeah. the uh, the way of producing, the way of recording, everything, yeah. and if you look at the album and say, oh, is there something we say, well, I'm proud of that, that we made it. There's something, if you say, for me, that's very important. It's everything. It's everything. Yes. For me, um, I feel that this is one of the records. Let me say this. Whenever I do anything, like I said, Time you can't get back. I respect everybody's time. So with this record, I wanted this to be a part of my legacy. So when people years from now, if someone never knows Melina Moy and someone comes across a vinyl in some vinyl shop 30, 40 years from now, and they're like, oh my God, bad as I want to be, this album cover, this is hot, who is this? And they listen and they go, oh my God, this woman was like, what the f is this? That's what I'm trying to do. So that no matter what, when you find that particular record, whether it's now, 10 years from now, or 50 years from now, you're gonna go, this person was here and they did something incredible and they were doing something different. And maybe it blows up or maybe you go, I don't, I don't get it. Kind of like Sister Rosetta Tharp. You know, Sister Rosetta Tharp actually was the person that invented rock and roll. She really did. And then cut to all the years later, finally Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is it just included her for uh, the nomination and to be inducted. And so it sometimes people can be ahead of their curve because people are not aware of uh, what is taking place. And we're out here grinding and doing our thing. And then all of a sudden, 50, 60 years from now, someone may pick it up and go, oh my God. And her story was this, who's Melina Moy? So yeah, with my music, I'm definitely making a statement. No one can copy what I'm doing. I am an original. Everything that I have done is coming specifically from my soul and from who I am. And I make sure that every person that I have put in my band and to help to continue to carry the Melina Moy sound that I so desperately want to bring to your country and for you to understand and feel what I am trying to represent, that for me is everything. That's what I expect to leave. So that's another thing. When you come to Melina Moy, you ain't gonna get it nowhere else. It's the Melina Moy experience. It is. I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to. I want to jump a bit. Um, for me, um, I like to listen to music. But for me, real music is live music. I'm with you. I'm. I'm. I'm a very it. old-fashioned guy. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned you were sleeping in your car. Did you play on the street or something like this? I love that. No, you know, when I came out there, because $20 would be like, was yeah. it 10 euro, 15 euro here, something like that. So imagine leaving somewhere and coming with 15 euro. And so basically you, you go with, man, I got to make it work. There ain't no plan B. I've got to make this work. So um, the funny thing is I, back in Minnesota, all the stuff was there like a guitar. So I had nothing. And I actually ended up being able to purchase another guitar was a, a, a guy hit the back of my car and by my car being total, I took that money and I went and, and bought a guitar. And then I just started uh, just playing more and playing more. And then suddenly the funny thing is, um, it's a song I have called Ain't It A Shame. I remember seeing, uh, walking down the Hollywood Boulevard and there we have all these streets. I mean, all these stars on the street, you know, Greta Garbo, you know, uh, Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix, all the biggest actress movies, m music. And I remember looking and I saw this guy, he had one leg and then he was cleaning the stars. And it was just me paying attention and seeing my environment. And then I started writing a song called Ain't It A Shame. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with the group called Bone Thugs and Harmony. And this was on another record. Um, I ended up doing the record and funny, I was trying to get Elton John. It was actually a takeoff one of uh, Elton's Benny and the Jets. And I ended up getting Bone Thugs and Harmony to actually do a rap on this particular record. And this was actually coming from that experience, like literally seeing what was taking place. I think that you have to go through certain things to get to the places that you are. And um, I wouldn't change that for the world because it, it taught me so much about myself. And not only that, it, to me, I love it when the music is just real and raw and gritty and dirty and so a solid groove. And I like to use that as the emotion to say so homeless, putting all that in the song and just keeping the drive. You know, it's something, music itself has a, a language. It really does, but there are emotions in notes. So when you even hear the record, the song I have called Enough, listen to how those emotions are and it really takes you on a ride. And that's why you're like, oh, I see where she's coming from. Cause you can't play that unless you actually come from where I'm, what I'm talking about.
That's the difference. When did everything change for you? When do you think when you were it was hard, you were fighting and That's right. you know what you wanted That's to do? That's right. What, when did it change? What, when did you reach a point where suddenly things started to go on to develop? You know, actually what happened was um I ended up getting on my knees. I was crying. And I remember saying, oh my God, you got to do something. I have to go back home. I'm out of money. Well, $20. But I mean, it's like, there's nothing. You have, God, if you want me to make it, you got to make something happen because I cannot do it myself. And then all of a sudden, and I tear up thinking about it, all of a sudden some things took place and I never forgot. I ended up, um, you had mentioned actress. Suddenly I got cast in a movie of all things to play a homeless person. Ha <laughs> how fitting I just play in you know, real life, right? So that changed a bit. And then when that took place, it gave me uh, legs. And from there, I ended up needing to give myself another break. So I said, you know what? People always, and I know this sounds funny. People always say, Melina, God, you know, you're so beautiful. You should do a calendar. And I thought, I don't know. So I ended up getting $500 from my roommate. And I put together a calendar wearing uh, swimsuits. And I took the calendar. And then I remember I called all these stores and nobody would take it. And then one guy said to me, you are going to be so famous. I am going to give you a credit to print up $20,000 worth of calendars. And I want to work with you. And I became one of the first African-American female that they actually put in Barnes and Noble stores. And that's why now you have more African-Americans in these stores. And I also took my single and I put it in the actual calendar and we shipped them out. And so if you didn't think I was, uh, beautiful or you that wasn't the thing you had the record if you like the if you didn't like the record you had the calendar and then suddenly it started to catch and that song ended up getting licensed to a tv show on mtv once that happened i took all the money from the calendars and then i ended up starting my label and i ended up um having my first single called alone that got me on the billboard chart in America, like that's a big deal. And I got to number nine in the country. And I think that when that happened, I realized, wow, I think we did something. Like, this is so cool because I had nothing. So, you know, you know what I mean? Like I came here 20 bucks. So to do that, you know what I mean? And then I looked on the chart and I got a call from billboard saying, congratulations, you're number nine in the country. You're the number nine record. And then everybody's calling me. And then I was like, holy shit, this is crazy. And then I realized, wow. Now I have to stay here. I have no money. I don't know how to make these things happen. I don't know how we got here. And then we quickly figured it out. And then from there, uh, you know, the journey keeps going on and I met some incredible people. My fiance being one who's also a film director. And so he directed my first film and then he helped to change my life tremendously. And we started the label. And then from there, I ended up getting really lucky. A gentleman heard about my story and he ended up funding my label. He's like, man, I don't know why someone hasn't just put a half a million or a million dollars into you right now. And I was like, well, you know, it's not that easy. People aren't just giving out a million dollars. And you know what he said? I think you're gonna be the next Beyonce. I think you're incredible. I wanna take a chance. And that was really what helped to put WCE Records on the map. And then from there, my rock and roll baby record, um, I own my label through Sony in America. Um, through Red, Red, I should say, which is Sony Music. And then um, my singles, Chaotic, got to number five in the country with B Bootsy Collins. And we thought, wow, if we can bring all this to Europe, this would be incredible because I see what we're having here. And that's how we came over here now. And so now the record, Bad As I Want To Be, because now you see why I said, man, I feel like, excuse my French, fuck what people are saying. I'm not gonna let you make me feel like I'm nobody. I'm not gonna make, let you make me feel that I don't matter and I don't have a voice and I don't count because I do. And I have something to say, that's it. And I'm going for it. Either you're fucking on the train or you're not. That's it. I'm not playing games. <laughs> that's it, we're not playing games. Yeah, there's so much more as I told you before. <laughs> and we can talk for hours. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid, no, I'm not afraid of, but uh, thank you very much as well. It's very interesting. and. Uh, as far as it concerns me or us, it's part one. I love it. I want to do part two. And because the thing is, yeah, because the, the piece of it is, you know, with the, with the music, um, 
you know, the style for this record is, you know, again, the Minneapolis sound. I'm, I grew up in that. So I love funk and synth bass and, you know, the bass guitar and obviously the rhythm guitar. So I wanted to make sure all that was incorporated with Bad As I Want to Be and go into the simplistic of songwriting and utilizing my DNA from Ohio and Minnesota and creating a sound that people would definitely go, oh, that's Melina Moy. I, I, like I said, that's Melina Moy, yeah. Coming back to music, and yeah. um, we didn't talk about music that much. You're talking about the sound and, and yeah. everything. Let's start uh, with your guitar. Yeah. It's a very custom-made guitar. That's right. I'm not. I, I'm not a musician, and very often I don't understand what does it all mean. So you had the idea, you had a sound in here. You, you knew how the guitar should sound. Right. So my thing is, because I'm really left-handed, right? Um, my father in the beginning, he gave me a right-handed guitar and he wanted me to play it like a right-handed person. I don't know how to play like that. So when he left the room, I took the guitar, I flipped it upside down. So the skinny E is closer to me and I started playing it. I said, oh, this feels good. And he was like, this is backwards, Melina. Nobody plays like this. Even Jimi Hendrix, he could play this way, but Jimi Hendrix restrings it for a left-handed player. I completely play backwards. So like Eric Gales, or Doyle Bramhall, which we've done the Hendrix tour together. But um, yeah, so to, to play it this way, I still feel like you're gonna get a different type of technique, different sound, different tone. Um, and um, I just wanted to just keep doing it, trying to, again, figure out what works for me. And then as you become better and you start to understand what you need, um, I am endorsed, I'm, a Fender, I'm part of the Fender family. So then I said to them, listen, because I'm playing a right-handed guitar, is it possible that we do a left-handed body so I can really go up higher from my leads here? And then let's make the neck um, left-handed body with the right-handed headstock, and then my strings are inverted backwards. So the kicker is, I want to say a right-handed player can play it, but they'll look like they're upside down. A left-handed player couldn't play it because it's actually three-strung upside down for a righty, for a lefty. So um, yeah, so for me, I just always kept with that. And then pickups. Um, I use the virtual blues, uh, which this particular pickup in the bridge, and also uh, the true velvet from Damasio, and my strings are generally D Markley. The kicker is I like eights, and a lot of people are like, what? But it's because, again, I'm a woman, so I do have lighter hands, but for me, I also, um, I really love to just be able to, to grab and to bend. And the nines are good, and it depends on to what songs. So I may sometimes uh, use a variations of nines and eights and a ten on the song if I have to tune down just because I'm trying to retain tone. Um, but generally, I do play with with eights, and I uh, compensate with my pickups to make it a lot fatter. And um, as far as like the amps, I'm a big fan of Fender. I love the tube, the Hot Rod DeVille 212. It's warm. I think that you know. For me, that amp just depends on the room. Meaning, uh, when you have, if we're playing outside, it takes on its own dimension, right? If you're playing in a really cool club, I love those because the space helps it to bounce off and it sounds extremely warm. And the best way to describe it would be like, everybody's had a, you know what a now later is? Um, a now later or a sucker, you know, a yeah, sucker. Yeah, yeah. And you know how you have a good sucker and you suck it and you can feel the uh, watermelon or whatever, a grape, well, to me, the amp has a tone like that, where it once, the more you suck it, you start to get the better feeling and it goes smaller and smaller, you know, then at the end you get the gum for the, the candy. So the amp, the more it sits, it gets warmer, warmer, warmer. So then uh, by the time it's really time to do that performance, you know, a 90 minute set, I'm gonna say probably about 45 minutes, oh my God, it's killer. Cause then it's just like, it's, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just beautiful. And it sounds so warm and beautiful and just sweet. So that also with, a, I'm a big fan of Boss. I know people always say, but I love Boss. I use the Boss uh, Blues Driver and of course the Jim Dunlap Wah. And I was going through different uh, pedals to try to figure out my sound and tone. But again, this works for me. We're talking about sound and tone. And there's a question I love to ask and I'm, I'm curious if this is the same answer. Sound. Yeah, and then your music sound is very important for you. Sounds of nature, sounds of Absolutely. rain. What is is there a sound that gives you a shiver, goose pimples in a good way? That's a great question. You know what? Um, yeah. In fact, you ever know two things. One is 
sometimes when you see a movie or you actually hear, you, you hear people in conversation or there's a moment and then there's a silence, but it's a different type of silence. The silence where everyone's like, holy shit. And you can feel it like we just witnessed something incredible. That one I love. And I also love the one when you, when you know someone is like killing it singing or killing it playing and you're just like, you feel it. You're like, holy shit, that was unbelievable. That, because it's the truth. You cannot deny it. Like I said, you, you ain't got, you know what I'm saying? You could always say, I'm not feeling it, but you cannot deny that that person just gave you everything they got and something inside of you stood up. That's a place I like to operate. You mentioned silence. Yeah. How important is silence for you? Oh, can I tell you something? Silence is so important. And, and as I was explaining yesterday, I, I was speak, speaking to a, a Joaquin and I said, one of the most important things is for each band member to realize they're all important. And what's important is that everybody stays in their own lane. If the bass player decides to play the guitar parts, this isn't gonna work. The reason that you have to stay solid in your groove is so that the little places where there is space can be heard. That is the silence. Silence is also a note. Silence is also a part of life and a part of a composition. That's why when you see, you read music and you see the rest note, that means take a beat. Don't say nothing, come. That's important, that's a part of it. So yes, yeah, silence is so important. <laughs> It'll be chaos, <laughs> right? <laughs> Chaotic. <laughs> Thank you very much, Melina. It was wonderful words for the end. And Thank you. I enjoyed talking to you and looking forward to see your life here in Germany. Yes, I cannot wait to come out. And I would say this, thank you so much for your time. And also to all of your viewers and listeners, please, 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 when you see Melina Moy coming out, I am asking you, because I want to come over here with my band, please get tickets, support not only myself, but continue to support live music. It is so important that we continue to have live music. But again, Follow me on all of my portals. My name is Melina Moy. I love meeki, meeting and making new friends. So Instagram, Melina Moy. Facebook, it's Melina Moy Music. And on Twitter, it's Melina Moy. Please stop by, say hello, and I look forward to coming out. And please, please, please let me know where you uh, heard about my uh, record and then let me know what you think. And I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.